This video is about sampling in Cork PS series keyboards. In this video, I will explain how to load a sample to a keyboard and create new sounds using it. So, by the end of this video, you would be able to create new user sounds and drum kits with custom samples. I will explain how to use drum samples and multi samples on the keyboard. Let's first understand the sampling process. A sample in simple terms is an audio file with a recording of an instrument or a sound effect in it. It can be in a WAV or AIF format or a KSF file which is Korg's native format. This audio file goes either to a custom drum kit or a multi sample. In a drum kit, the sample file can be directly assigned to a key. Multi samples are used to create the normal sounds like strings, guitar, etc. With multi samples, there would be multiple sample files assigned to specific key ranges or zones of the keyboard. This multi sample can be assigned to an oscillator of a sound. Let's go to the sampling page. First, we need to go to the sound mode. While in the sound mode, press the record button to go to the sampling page. This is a sampling page. The very basic step is to load a sample file and save it to the keyboard's memory. Using this option, we can load a sample. I am selecting one from the USB. Now the sample is loaded here. This is just in this edit screen. It is not yet saved to the keyboard's memory. So if you exit from the sampling mode or switch off the keyboard, this sample will be lost. We can save it to the memory using the right option here. We can give it a new name. This is a drum sample. So we have to assign a drum family to it. This is useful when using features like editing tracks by drum family or drum mapping in styles etc. We can ignore the other options for now. Selecting OK and this will be saved as a new sample. It will be saved as the last item in the samples list. Now we can assign this sample to a drum kit. I am closing the sampling page. Press record to exit from here. Selecting a drum kit. To go to the drum kit edit page, press menu and select drum kit. Now press a key and that will be selected on the screen. Now select RAM from here. The user samples we add will be in the RAM. ROM has a factory samples. It automatically selected the last sample. This is a sample which we just saved. It sounds a little different. It is because of the transpose value here. Now it sounds fine. This is a process of assigning a user sample to a drum kit. There is a detailed video on user drum kit creation. The link is in the description. I am going back to the sample edit page. We just saved the sample to the memory without doing any edits. There are some edit options in the sampling page. Let me load another sample. This sample has some empty space here. We can adjust it using the start value. The zoom controls would be helpful when we need to edit these values. Now it is fine. We can zoom it vertically as well. I am adjusting the end position. In this way, we can avoid unwanted portions from the samples. I am saving this sample. When we save the samples after setting the start and end point like this, the unselected areas would be removed from it. Now it is saved. 
We can open the saved sample from here for editing. This is a sample we saved now. The start and end points are removed. Only the selected portion is saved. When we need to remove a specific area from the sample, we can use the cut option from the menu. It will delete the selected portion. This is normalize. If you apply this to the samples, it will standardize the levels. So if you apply this to all the samples, the levels would be equal in all of them. The trim crop option keeps the selected portion and deletes the portions outside the selection. This option loop is for auto repeating the sample. If it is not on, the sample will play once and stop. When it is on, it will get repeated until the key is released. The looping area can be set from here. We can assign a loop start point. It need not be from the starting always. This yellow bar is a loop starting point indicator. I'll explain the loop in detail in a few minutes. I'm not saving this sample. Let me load another one. This has a difference. It is a stereo sample. Applying normalize. I'm saving it. When we save a stereo sample, it will be saved as two files. The left and right separate. Along with the name we gave, an L or R would be added at the end. Now I'm going to assign it to a drum kit. It shows as a single sample here and it is marked as stereo. For a drum sample, it works straightforward. But for the normal sound, the left and right needs to be handled separately. This is a drum sampling process. We'll go to the multi sampling now. Unlike the drum sound, the normal sound has one more step in sampling. After saving the sample file to the memory, it needs to be added to a multi sample. The major difference between a drum sound and a normal sample is drum sample will be assigned to a specific key and it is played back when that key is pressed. In a normal sound, it needs to generate the pitch of each key from the sample used. This pitch generation can result in loss of quality beyond some key ranges. So there could be multiple sample files assigned in a multi sample to make the pitch generation smoother. They will be split across different key ranges. I'll show you the basic and easy option with just one sample now. Then we'll go to the advanced option with multiple samples and stereo samples. Let me load a sample. This is a bell sound. Normalizing it. There are some empty portions at the starting doing some edits to select the correct portions. We can zoom the waveform and fine tune the selections. This is vertical zoom. For these sample files, we need to specify the original pitch of the sample. We can set it here. Once it is set from here, it will be automatically taken in the multi sampling page. We can modify it from the multi sample page as well. Now saving it. While saving, we have an option called play from preload buffer. This is normally not needed. Once it is enabled, the sample will be fully loaded into the RAM before playing. This is needed if you want to reverse the sample or use a single sample to play in the entire keyboard range. 
here we are going to use a single sample for creating the multi sample that means it has to play in the entire keyboard range i am not selecting this option now let me show you what the difference it is going to make we need not select the drum family as well now we need to create a multi sample with it press menu and select multi sample now we are in the multi sample page this shows the keyboard range the full range is active that means only one keyboard zone is set up now we can split it into multiple key ranges the index shows the total key zones each zone will have one sample assigned to it let's now do it with one zone and one sample we can assign the sample from here it is off by default that means no sample is assigned the original pitch is automatically assigned here because we had set it in the sample edit page now using this single sample file the pitch of each key is generated the original pitch is transposed for each key here the transpose is stopped this is because the samples without the player from preload buffer enabled the transpose range will be limited this is not needed in the normal case where we use multiple samples to play in different key ranges but since we are using one single sample for the entire key range here enabling the preload buffer would fix this problem let me update it in the sample we can go to the edit page directly from here i'm enabling the preload buffer saving it now going to multi sample page the transpose works fine now this is the use of preload buffer now saving the multi sample We need to assign this to an oscillator of a sound. Going to the sound edit page. When you want to create a new sound with this sample, an easy option is to select a similar sound and change the sample in its oscillators. By doing this, we can retain the effects and parameters used in that sound while we update the sample. I'm selecting a tubular bell from factory. Press menu and go to basic page. This has only one oscillator. Go to the oscillator tab. Now select RAM from here. The last sample is selected automatically. That is the one we just saved. We can adjust the level if needed. The sound is ready. I have already made a detailed video on editing oscillators. You can watch that for detailed oscillator techniques. The link is in the video description. Just for an extra effect, we can add one more oscillator to this sound. Setting it to two. Now the second oscillator has the default parameters. It has a default piano sample. I'm copying the oscillator 1 to the second one. This will bring all the settings in that oscillator to the second one. Here we can adjust some settings. Let me assign a different sample. the original tubular bell sample here now oscillator 1 has a sample we just created and 2 has a tubular bell this is just an option to create a new sound let us now create a multi sample with different key zones loading a new sample i have a set of piano samples these are samples with different pitches loading the first one this message is a warning that the sample length is more than the supported length so the remaining portions from the file will be trimmed this is a stereo sample normalizing it
Now the level is increased. Setting the original node value. We need to know the original node value of the sample. I know this is G1. So setting it as G1. I'm not doing any other editing. Saving it now. We need not enable the play from preload buffer here since we are going to have multiple samples for the sound. So the transpose range for each sample would be very less. Loading the second one. Normalizing it. Setting the node value to G2. This means node G of octave 2. Now saving it. Loading the other samples and doing the same steps there. For this one, I am setting the original node to C5. The original pitch is G5, but this is just to show you what will happen if you don't set the correct node value. Now I have saved 5 samples. They are the same piano sounds, but with different pitch. Let us now go to the multi-sampling page. Earlier we used one sample to play for the full keyboard range. Now we have 5 samples for 5 different octaves. So we need to split the keyboard range into different zones. By default, there would be only one zone, which is for the entire key range. To create another zone, we can use the insert or add buttons. Insert will split the current zone into two. The new zone will be created at the left. If we use add, it will add a new zone after the last one. Use the delete button if you want to delete a zone. The index shows the total number of zones and the current selected zone. This is the starting and ending keys in the zone. I have deleted the other zones. We will start from 1. Assigning a sample. When you save a stereo sample, it will be saved as two files in the memory. One for the left and one for the right channels. When creating multi samples, we need to create separate ones for left and right. Let us start with the left channel samples first. This has the original node G1. We have the next sample for G2. So this zone need to end before G2. I am setting it to F sharp 2. The grey portion is the area outside this zone. This sample will not be used in that area. Adding another zone. This will add a zone after the current one. That is from G2. The zone is added. But there is no change on the screen. This is because the current selected zone is still 1. We need to change it to 2 here to set the sample and other properties for it. Now we are in zone 2. We had set G2 in the sample. It detected it automatically. This is the use of setting the original node while saving the sample. But we can modify it if it is wrongly set in the sample. Setting the zone limit to F sharp 3. The next sample is going to be G3. Adding the next zone. We need to do the same for all 5 samples. This sample shows the original note as C5. I set it wrong while saving it. It is actually G5. Just wanted to show you how to correct it here. Now it is G5. This screen shows a summary of the zones and sample assignment. I am saving it. Since it has only the left channel samples, I am naming it Test Piano L.
This is how it sounds. The notes in a zone far away from the original note are losing quality. We have different samples for each octave here, but transposing one octave is reducing quality. So to have a better quality, we should add more samples and try to reduce the zone area to have a better quality sound. But we have only five samples here. So there is another option to make this better. We have the zones starting from the key G and ending on F sharp. So the transpose to the last key is too high. If we make the original note at the middle, this can be reduced to half. So I am changing the zones to start with D and end at C sharp. When we adjusted the top key of the previous zone, this zone starting point is automatically adjusted. Leaving the last zone to extend to the last octave. This sounds better than the previous one. Saving it. This is the left channel. We need to create the right channel as well. It is easy now. We will use the same zones but change the samples for each of them. This is the right channel sample. Doing it in all the zones. Now saving it as a new multi sample. This is for the right channel. The last zone has the original note wrongly set. Need to update that. This is C5 now. So updating it here. It is G5. Now exiting from the sample screen, we will apply these samples to a piano sound. This sound has 8 oscillators. We have only 2 multi samples now. So I am setting the oscillator count to 2. Now in the oscillator page, select RAM and assign the samples. This is a left channel multi sample. The right channel for this one. There is no sound. The original sound we were editing was using 8 oscillators. So they may have been split into different velocity zones. Going to the velocity range tab. Here the bottom velocity is 116. So this oscillator will play only when the velocity is higher than 115. We need to have different samples to play on different velocity ranges so that the sound will have a different texture based on the velocity we apply. I am setting it to 1. Check these settings if you don't hear any sound when playing. Setting it for the other oscillator as well. These settings are explained in detail in the oscillator video. You can watch that to get a clear idea of these techniques. In the amp page, we can do some more adjustments. Here the oscillator 1 has a pan to the left and the other one to the right. This is because we use stereo sampling here. Setting the amp level to zero. This will give the maximum volume level. This is how to create a sound with multi sampling. Let me show you a sound which I have downloaded. This is a piano sound. It has six layers to play in different velocity ranges. Each layer has separate left and right channels. So there are 12 multi samples for it. Let me open one of them. This has 31 zones. We were using 5 zones in the sound we made. 
With 31 zones, this multi sample will have 31 samples. These zones are made with three keys. The original note is at the middle and one note transposed towards left and right. This will give a high quality sound, but it needs more sampling memory. There is one more setting to show you. I am loading a pad sample. These type of sounds need to play continuously until the key is released. But the sample has an end. So when the sample end is reached, it will stop the sound. How to keep the sound sustained until the key is released? This is using the loop feature. We can set a portion of the sample to loop continuously. We don't need the entire sample. Cutting the end part. We need just this portion. Setting the loop to on. Now it loops from the starting of the sample. Moving the loop start. Now it loops this portion alone. But there is a tick noise. We can avoid this and make it blend smoothly. If you check the use zero option, it will stick to the positions where the waveform is at the zero point. This would help to get a smooth starting point. If you still hear the tick sound, use the crossfade option. This will make it smooth. Now it is playing smoothly. The loop lock feature fixes the length of the loop. So if you change the loop start or sample end values, the same loop length is maintained. When I change the loop start, it adjusts the end value automatically. I am changing the end value. Now the loop start is automatically changed. So this is a sampling process. I hope this was helpful. If you like this video, please don't forget to give a like and if not subscribed already, please do subscribe. If you have any questions, please post them in the comment section. I'll try to answer them. So that's it for this video. See you in the next one. Thank you.